We've talked a lot about the quantum circuit model of quantum computation, and we've sketched a lot of example quantum circuits. And in this video, I want to show the purpose behind doing that. I want to show you what it would look like to write a quantum algorithm for a real quantum computer. So right now I'm on IBM's quantum experience. Anyone can go to quantumexperience.ng.bluemix.net and um, sign up for an account and create quantum circuits that run on IBM's real quantum computer or just run simulations of these quantum circuits. In the last video, we talked about how to create the uniform superposition. And in this video, I want to actually do it. So. The interface is pretty intuitive. We have a set of quantum gates over here. We already talked about the controlled knot gate, the knot gate and the Hadamard gate, and um, measurement, which isn't really a gate, but it's still something we need to represent on our quantum circuit. So in the last video we said to create the uniform superposition, we just want to apply a Hadamard gate to all the qubits. Um, this particular quantum computer only has five qubits, so there are 32 different basis states and we want all of them to be equally likely. So let's apply a Hadamard gate to each of these qubits. Uh, we do this just by dragging and dropping the gate onto our quantum circuit here. And then um, we'll follow all those Hadamard gates with a measurement on each qubit. So this should look really similar to the quantum circuits we've been sketching. And that's all there is to it. This quantum circuit is complete and ready to go. Now, ideally, we would have an equal probability of finding all qubits to be in the state zero, of finding all of them to be in the state one, and so on. We can't really tell if that's the case by just running this circuit once and looking at the result. We have to um, run, run the circuit, make measurements many times, and then we can compute uh, the probabilities of different outcomes. So since there's 32 different outcomes in this particular experiment, we're gonna have to do at least 32 runs to even see all the outcomes. And just because of probabilities, we probably have to run it much more to um, get uh, an idea of how likely different outcomes are. So fortunately, um, IBM lets you choose uh, how many times your experiment's gonna run. You can do any, any number between one and 8,200. Um, so let's do something like 5,000. Should give us a pretty good idea of what the distribution looks like. I'm gonna use this simulator because you have to use credits to actually run your circuit on um, a real architecture, but the results should be the same. Uh, just click simulate and wait around for a bit. And uh, that's how long it takes. So this is the outcome. Um, so it's not showing me all the values, probably because there's 32 different ones and it doesn't want me to get overwhelmed, but you can download the full results as a CSV file. Um, comma separated values, which Excel should understand. So I'll open this up in Excel so we can see actually all the results from running this experiment 5,000 times. So these are the outcomes of each experiment. Um, it looks like we found the system to be in the state 10000. 164 out of 5,000 times, and so on for the rest of these. Let me convert these binary values to decimal values just to make this um, a little more human readable. So that, that state 10000 corresponds to 16. And let me, um, let me swap out these labels too. Um, and just to make this more readable, I'll organize this in um, normal order. <laughs> um, 
All right, so we can see that all 32 states are represented, 0 through 31. Again, 0 being all qubits found to be in the state 0, and 31 all qubits found to be in the state 1. And just looking at the number of times, again, we ran this experiment 5,000 times, and this is the number that we found the qubits to be in these particular states. Um, so if you want to compute a probability, you can just take the number of times that you found the qubits to be in that state and divide by 5,000. Um, you can see that all these are roughly equal. Again, it's not going to be perfect because it's a probabilistic thing and we only ran it 5,000 times. If we ran it an infinite number of times, then we would see these numbers converging all to the same number, which would be uh, 1 over 32, which is 0 0.031, which is pretty close to what we see all of these being. So there you have it, uh, running our first real quantum computation. We didn't do anything too useful, but again, creating the uniform superposition is the first step in a lot of quantum algorithms. And I hope I've demonstrated to you that applying a Hadamard gate to each of our qubits does indeed create the uniform superposition.